Let's continue to introduce the move, different move instruction. Actually, we call the zero extension or sign extension. So before, remember, we talked about in the first video, if we're only using the move instruction, they have to have the source operand and the destination, the destination operand with the same size. But sometimes we do want to copy a smaller value into a larger destination. So that's why instead of to using the move instruction, we call the move ZX. So the ZX represents for the zero extension. So the move ZX instruction will fill out the upper half of the destination with zero. Like earlier we said, your source operand is smaller than your destination operand. So the source operand, we will copy over to the lower byte. So then what is not enough value to do, we just extend with the zero. So that's what we call the move ZX instruction. So for example, I have a BL is one byte, but I cannot use in the move the BL to AX. So instead I use in the move ZX. So the move ZX will overwrite the first byte from AX. So then the rest of that we just fill with the zero. So that's why you can see here that's the move ZX syntax. You, uh, your destination has to be registered. So they can be four bytes registered. They can be two bytes registered. But your source operand can be a smaller number. So that's why they can either be the registered or memory operand for one, one byte. I can copy to the four byte. Or I can move the two byte to the four byte. So the value is if the space without no without any value to copy over, I just fill out with the zero. So the same thing you can have two byte registered as a destination. Then you can have only one byte registered, registered or one byte memory operand to move the value to. So be careful this move ZX. We allowed your destination operand has bigger size. But destination operand has to be a registered. So this we call the zero extension. So that's bad is good to use for our unsigned integer extension. So if we want to do the sign extension, that means you want to have your source operand copy over to the destination operand, but destination operand value is have bigger space so then the move xx you see that's the move that's the sign extension they will fill out the upper half the destination with the copy of the source operand the sign bit so remember what is the sign bit right the sign bit actually is the most significant bit right so when you have your source operand to copy over then the value we don't know how to fill up. We're just using the sign bit from the source operand to fill it up. So you can see here the source operand most significant bit is one. So then we fill out with one. So that's what we call the sign extension. So of course if this one is zero I will fill out with zero. So the same thing our move xx they have the syntax like this. But their destination operand can only be registered. And also usually we do the move xx is we try to move the sign integer to the larger destination. So that's the two different moves we have. The next one, let's talk about the LAHF and SH, SAHF instruction. So these two instructions, be careful, sometimes I were a little confused about the name. So about the LAHF, that means load status flag into AH. So this instruction will copy the low byte of the E flag register. So remember, E flag is registered for store, uh, store the status flag. 
But actually, we only need the lower byte because they only have one byte for the registered uh, for the status flag. So they will copy over the low the low byte from the E flags registered into AH. So the following flag are copied. Uh, so then when you do the uh, for example, you do the you just need to do the LAHF. So this instruction doesn't have any operand because they, by default their operand is AH is the destination. So then we copy over the low byte value from E flag. So afterward you see AH will contain the status flag. So then afterward you see if you want you can save in some memory operand. So that's load status flag. So the other one is SAHF. So this one is you store what we have in AH. Then we update the value in the status flag. So that's why it becomes you save from the AH into the status flag. So they will copy AH into the low byte of the E flag register. So that's the SAHF. So you can see here, right? So you have your AH value, right? So the same thing, SAHF, the same with the LAHF, they don't have any operand. Uh, so be careful about these two instruction. Um, the sometimes I will confuse about the name. Uh, so one thing is I just want you guys to make sure you will highlight that to know LAHF is load from the E flag to AH. But it's AHF is save the AH to the flag. So the last instruction we want to talk about in this video is exchange. So it's XCHG, that's for the exchange. So XCHG exchange the values of two operands. So these two operands has at least one operand to be registered. So on the other hand, this is the same as the move. You cannot to cannot be two memory operands. And also no immediate operand are permit. Because remember they will exchange the value. So the both operands need to have the memory location to store the value. So that's the same requirement as the move. So on the other hand, exchange, you exchange two value, the value of two operands, right? So both operands, they has to be the same size. So we see the example. So the same thing, we declare the data, we have two words variable. So now when we do the exchange, I can exchange two register, you see, same size. Two register, uh, one byte. So then I can exchange val1 is the memory operand with the bx because that's two byte word. So then of course I can exchange ex and ebx, they both are four bytes. So that's the valid instruction. So here you will see a couple of examples are incorrect. Uh, ex cannot exchange with the val1. The reason ex is four byte. Val1 and Val2 cannot be exchanged with each other because both they are memory operand. So that's exchange instruction. So from here you can see most, most instruction we talk about in this chapter, they all require the two operand with the same size. And also only one can be the memory operand. So continue, I we will talk about more about the operand. But this time we talk about the operand, we talk about the direct of set operand. That's mean how we will access an array element as a data. So we see here, what is the offset? A constant offset is added to the data label to produce an effective address. The address is the reference to get the value inside the memory location. So what does that mean? Let's see here. So you we learn about that, right? Uh, we talked about last week last week. You can have your data declaration 
with multiple value. So that's why here we have one array B. So this array B is byte. So then we have four value. So that's why you say you see here on oh, that's you have array B byte. So then you have 10 H. Twenty H, thirty H, and your forty H. So right, they are referral by array B. So array B actually is locating where? Array B only referred to the beginning of the address here. So that's why when you're using array B alone, they only refer to ten H. So then, how about if I want to refer to 20H, how should I do? So remember, like we told you before, right? You have your location. You have your, each one is one byte. So that's why we told you this one, each one is one byte. So, but one thing is your data label, array B only access by the beginning of here. So that's good because here is array B, then here is one byte. So this one, this location is what? Right, array B plus one. Right, why? Because you see, start from here is array B, this location, this location. So then add one, right? So this one is array B plus one. So continue actually. If we want to access your 20 is array B plus one. Then your 30 will be, right, array B plus 2. So then you want to access your 40. So then you need to use array B plus 3. So this one is we call the offset. Add to the data label. Offset is 1, 2, 3. So then you add to the data label. So when you have your AL, uh, we move AL, but we're using the array B plus 1. So actually we're using the 20 to move to the AL. You can either just using array B plus one. They will calculate the memory address and automatic dereference. Or I will recommend you you also can have the parentheses. A square bracket. Uh, so that can help you to know you just need to do the dereference. So don't you feel that's very familiar? Uh, like our array C plus plus right? Just our array C++, we're only using the index 0, 1, 2, 3. But here in assembly language, we are according to the real byte to add. So that's the array B plus 1. So that's referred to the memory address. Continue earlier, we show you the byte array, right? Yeah, so of course we can declare the word array. So we have array W. So each location is 2 bytes. So then I just using the W first. So then here the D, I just want you to make your uh, memory address to show how they happen in memory. So here I only show you the, the word array, A dot, uh, array W. So the same thing, you have array W is 10,000, 2,000. Okay, so here we don't have the 3,000, so then 4,000, so we remove that. Okay, so you have 10,000, 20,000, 3,000. Uh, 3, but one thing is because the W is, the word is two bytes. So that's why the first array W refer to 1000H. In order to access the 2000H, then we need to plus two. So then the same thing, access 3000, we need to use the array W plus four. 
So of course, after they finish, this one actually at the end of your array W will be the six. Okay.